Samsung XAMD is changing the game. What's up guys and what a epic news day today. The chip of tomorrow could actually be the chip that powers a next generation console. How cool is that? We also have our first information regarding the Snapdragon 875 chip which will power most of the Android phones next year. We'll discuss that later, but first let's talk about the Samsung X AMD. So in my last video, the most exciting feature that you guys are waiting for is actually a AMD Exynos 1000 chip, even more than the underscreen camera. As we know that things are in the process for the next year's Galaxy S21 flagship, the 5 nanometer Exynos 1000 chip, based on the latest ARM architecture, will rock an AMD GPU for the first time in history, based on its own on RDNA architecture. And now the big news is that the Samsung XAMD chip could power the next console, Nintendo Switch. If this actually happens, then it's amazing for Samsung to make an impact in the console world, which is the first time we're seeing. According to the news, Nvidia doesn't have the ARM-based CPU solution which Nintendo wants for its next console and they are expecting to make a move and ask AMD for the help since they have experience in producing ARM-based solutions. And based on how closely they are working with Samsung, Samsung, who is undoubtedly the most experienced ARM chip maker in the game, already building their next Exynos 1000 chip based on the latest ARM architecture, they are perfect for this collaboration. In my opinion, it's game changing. Imagine the same chip inside your flagship Galaxy S21 powering a console, a gaming console. That alone speaks for its performance, it sounds pretty awesome. I'm really excited to see what this will bring to the table next year. The super early prototype benchmark of the AMD GPU already beats the Adreno 660 by at least 15%. Imagine the final deal, that would be much better. Now speaking of Adreno, we have the Snapdragon 875 chip coming as well. So Snapdragon 875 is said to be a 5 nanometer chip. It will also be cheaper for manufacturers than the Qualcomm 865 because this time the 5G modem is said to be embedded. So you can expect to see the X60 5G modem in there. We also have the latest Cairo 685 cores, most likely based on the latest ARM Cortex-A78 cores. The next-gen Adreno 665 GPU will be on board, along with some next-level technology. Sadly, at the moment, we just have the information on the specs, so no info on how the performance will be, but best believe Qualcomm will come strong once again. I know this for a fact because they've been doing really awesome since the last two years, beating Exynos, and this time, Samsung will not let that happen. In the end, we want both variants of Galaxy S21 at the same level. Now speaking of CPU, MediaTek has just announced its new Dimensity 1000 Plus chip. This might be the most powerful mid-range chip that we have right now. It is based on the 7 nanometer process. It's got 5G support built in on a new ultra power saving deck in native sport for a 144 hertz display looking pretty damn strong. In fact, there is already a phone coming from a Vivo sub brand that will be rocking this new MediaTek Dimensity 1000 plus chip. And lastly, it is coming. DxO Mark has announced that they will be releasing the result of the Galaxy S20 Plus camera on May 11th, which is on Monday. So really excited to see what the scores will be on this phone. Whether you care about them or not, it's going to be interesting to see if this actually beats the Galaxy S20 Ultra. That would be so dope. I mean, there is a chance that that might happen. So anyways, that's all the news we have right now. I'll really appreciate if you guys subscribe to the channel with notifications on and as always i'll catch you guys in the next one peace out